Hello again. I've gotten some questions about how to find maxima and minima of functions using MathCAD, and that seems like a pretty good idea for a video, so here we go. First thing I need is a function to work on. Here's one I made up a little while ago that I kind of like. Okay, so there's f of x equals minus x e to the minus x over 5. Now it's maybe not clear right away that that has a minimum, but it does. To find out, let's plot it. So say insert graph xy plot, put the independent variable x on the horizontal axis, and let's put the function name f of x on the vertical axis, and there we go. Now it's uh, if we don't give MathCAD a uh, set of limits for the axes, it guesses minus 10 and plus 10 for the x-axis. I don't really care about uh, what's going on in the negative range, so let me uh, change that. Just click on the plot, and it comes up with these axes. Now when you have these little brackets over here, like right there and right there, that's your indication that MathCAD is just guessing. So if I delete down there and say 0, and click off the plot, there we go. So let's move this up here. Now watch what happens when I do this. It doesn't know. It says f of x is undefined. That's because the plot starts above where I've defined my function. All I got to do is slide down here a little bit, and now it knows what the function is again. Remember, MathCAD works from left to right and then from top to bottom. So um, let's go ahead and use the minimize function. I want to find that point right there. Now it turns out I know already that the minimum uh, is at x equal minus 5. And in the optimization world, uh, the location of a minimum or a maximum is usually called x star. It has a little uh, uh, superscript asterisk next to it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, give it an initial guess. All right, now math, the minimize function and the maximize function both need an initial guess. Now the initial guess doesn't have to be a very good one. You can see x of 0 is not a good guess at all because the the maximum or the minimum is nowhere near there, but it's close enough. Uh, even a bad initial guess is enough to get the program running, and it won't have any problems finding the minimum of this function. So I say minimize, and then I give it the, ver the function name and the name of the independent variable. I just hit equals, and there it is. Now what I could do, if I want, is I can say x star now I've got that super or the subscript dot star on there. That dot is my is the indication that this is just a text subscript. This doesn't have any uh, mathematical meaning. The subscript doesn't give me the location in a vector or anything like that. It's just like a subscript in Word. So I can type my command here, minimize f comma x just like before, and now the answer is going to be assigned to the variable x star. If I want to know what the function value is at x star, because what I've done now is I find the, found the value of x that minimizes f, so it's right there, I can say f of x star equals, and it's minus 1.839. Now let's say I want to know that to more than uh, three decimal places. I can highlight it and get that little black box back there. Say format result, go to number of decimal places. Let's go to five maybe. Okay, now it only gave me four. That means that last one is, an, is a zero, and it doesn't uh, put the trailing zeros on. So there we go. There's how to use ma uh, minimize. Now, what if I wanted to use maximize? Well, let me just change this. Now I want to find, now my function has a maximum, not a minimum. It works the same way. Just give it a guess. Again, doesn't have to be a good one. And type in the function name and the independent variable, and no surprise, it's 5 again. So there's maximize. Now, the way we all, whoops, the way we all learned in calculus class, let me put the, the uh, there. The way we all learned how to do this in calculus class was to find where the slope equals 0 and find the value of x at that point. Well, in order to do that, we need to know what the derivative is. So let's, let's do it this way. Let me call it f prime of x, and I'll define that as just click up here to the, the derivative button and put the x in there, and f of x, there we go. Now if I want, I can find the root of x prime, or of f prime I should say, and again just give it a guess. Oh, 
Oops. This is the this is the uh, one of the funny things in MathCAD. Sometimes you have to put the sub x in here in the in the argument list, and sometimes you don't. So anyway, there it is. There's the root of the derivative, where the derivative equals zero, and again, it's five. No big surprise there. Okay. One thing I don't know right now, though, is I don't know what the derivative is. I've got it defined, but I haven't had actually had MathCAD tell me what this looks like symbolically. Well, I can do that if I like. Let's do this, and I can put a symbolic equal sign in there. Now, if you want to know uh, how to do that on the keyboard, just hit Control Dot, and that gives you that. And there it is. Now, one of the things MathCAD doesn't always do very well is uh, refresh the screen. You can see here I've got some uh, an in incomplete uh, screen refresh. So if you need to uh, clean the screen up, just hit Control R. There we go. Hit Control R again. Or you can go up here to, let's see, View and hit Refresh that way. So anyway, there's the expression for F prime. And I can, again, find the root of that any time I like. Well, if it works in one variable, maybe it works in two variables, or three or four. And of course it does. So rather than type all this out, I've got a uh, function here I'm going to just paste in. I have another uh, MathCAD window opened up outside the viewing area here, so I'm just cutting and pasting from that. Here's a function of two variables, x and y. So let's see what this looks like. Say insert graph. And I'm going to say surface plot, and there it is. Okay, there's a box for an argument there, and I just have to give it an F, and there it is. Okay, again, now MathCAD is guessing at what the uh, values of the independent variables should be, what the ranges should be. And it turns out this is it guessed pretty well. Now that's hard to look at, so let's change it a little bit. Let's go to appearance, and let's say hide lines, and turn the color map on. Now that's a lot easier to look at. Now the other thing I don't know is I don't know which one of those is the x-axis and which one of those is the y-axis. An easy way to find out is to just label them x-axis and go down here to there and y-axis. So there we go. Now I know which one's which. And it's pretty obvious that there's a minimum there and a maximum there, but I don't know exactly where they are. Well, I could always change the type of plot, and I could go to a contour plot. Now, for obvious reasons, my students and I call this a butterfly function, because that looks kind of like a butterfly. Notice it's kind of rough there. I can go to Quick Plot Data, and I can increase the number of grid points it uses to calculate the function. So that smooths it up a little bit. OK, I'm going to move that slightly uh, out of the frame here. Oops, if it'll let me. There we go. And I want to find the minimum of that, which guessing right right there looks like it ought to be around, I don't know, minus 2 maybe and plus 1, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, let's give it some initial guesses. Just say 0, 0. My initial guesses don't have to be very good, remember. And say minimize f. Now I have two independent variables, x and y. So I'm just going to list them. And there we go. There's the answer. Actually, I wasn't very close when I did it by eyeball, was I? The answer is right there. I get minus 1.286 in the x-axis, which is about right there. OK, I can live with that. And plus 1.286 in the y-axis. Now, what happens if I change the maximize to, the, to or sorry, the minimize to maximize? Well, I should be able to get a point right down there. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess it's probably just going to move the equal sign. It's probably just going to flip the order of those two numbers. I don't know, actually. I didn't do this before I started the video. And well, pretty close, 1.296. So there you go. We now know how to maximize and minimize functions in MathCAD. Uh, and uh, we can uh, use this or do that using the maximize and minimize functions that are predefined. Or we can set derivatives equal to 0 and solve for the root.